your autobiography, Bright Lights, Big City. <laughs> Big with two G's. Well, I, it Except only for works. Say, oh, come on, that's not how you it even spell it. It only works with two G's because it draws one. attention to itself if yeah. it has two G's. Maybe I should just go with two G's from here on out. Well, you're B.D. Anklevich. People always ask me, is it one or two G's? And I'm just like, oh, it's just Facebook. It's just Facebook, little man. <laughs> you can do better. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. That was your first mistake. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My, my Goat. Cast. What? The nothing. Cast? Nothing. I didn't say nothing. Uh, hey, this is Rich Outfield. Sorry, he was supposed to say his name, but I said mine first. Yeah, that's the mood I'm in. That's right, and this is Big Anklevich. California Rich is apparently sitting next to me here. Buy my book, motherfucker. That's right. They'll change your life. <laughs> that's right. I got Hollywood B. the Anklevich with me. B-E-E-D-Y Anklevich with me. <laughs> and we've each got products for you to buy. And if you don't buy them, you can take this. Oh, I forget. It's a podcast. I did something rude with my hand. Yeah. I did something rude and mildly pleasurable with my hand just now. <laughs> so, suck it. Actually, well, it has been a long time since California Rich showed up. Maybe... We'll invite him back at the end of this episode. Are you sure that's not Jersey Rich? <laughs> I forgot the first time I, I did that voice. You're like, what? How is that California Rich? Have you ever I, known anybody in California to talk that way? And, I guess California is full to brimming with people that aren't from California. So I guess it still kind of makes sense, but only sort of. <laughs> I didn't, I, I, there's a voice in the back of my head, in the same way that, you know, Marty, you've got to come back with me. I just flip a switch and suddenly it's Dr. Brown. Yeah, I flip a switch and it's California Rich Outfield, you tool. And I, <laughs> I don't know why he has that accent, but he did the first time. And yeah. plus my hands start doing the gesticulating uh -huh. when it's California Rich. What well, he needs to sound, California Rich should sound like, you know, James Woods when he was uh, Hades on the... the... Oh, yeah. In Hercules her. Disney movies, like, oh, baby, yes, buy my book, you love it, it's wonderful, yeah, we'll go home, we'll schmooze, <laughs> we'll have some group sex, and then uh, take a nap. We'll do a line of coke, we'll go to a Scientology meeting, it's, see, again, I've got that voice, where it was suddenly, it was California Steve Buscemi there, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I am... <laughs> Joe Pesci coming up, because <laughs> he's really California. <laughs> what, you didn't read my book? What's wrong with you, you f***? You read my book! All right, well, there's going to have to be a lot of bleeping in this episode. I apologize. Yeah. R-O-8-O-T, keep... do you mind doing that? Uh, you, R-O-8-O-T, you big bucket of <laughs> Hopefully he will bleep that. I, I derailed our conversation. I, you, you had a, a mission statement for this episode, something that... Did I? Uh, a goal that you were working toward, or a... a, a vi what do you call that, where it's just like, okay, hey, welcome to the shareholders meeting. Uh, this is our our thing for the year, or our thought, our, oh, our, yeah. our, our focus is going to be on this. What was the thing that we... we mantra, our went, mission statement. Our mission statement for the year. And it right. is, take me back to the Paradise City, where the girls are green, and they have big... Wait, the girls are green. The grass is... The grass is green. Okay, never mind. Forget about the mission statement. Just, you need to make money for the CEO. He's a billionaire, got a very small retirement fund for all of you. <clears throat> so he's trying to compensate for that. Yes. By, um, by making more money. We were we go to Wendy's on Mondays. Now it's a new tradition. I think we've done it for three weeks in a row, but maybe even four. What do you think? I think we did it for four because <laughs> last week was a sad attempt at it because we went to see Logan and I also forgot my keyboard and then we wound up in a rush because we only had like 20 minutes before the movie started so you wrote a decent amount i don't know how much you wrote and i think i got in 61 words by uh, typing <laughs> on my phone's keyboard i think i typed about the equivalent of three tweets <laughs> i felt a little bit bad for you but as usual i felt more bad for myself because <laughs> gosh i've got so much experience there you know it's just like please hire me I've got all these years of feeling sorry for myself under my belt. 
I can do it in a second. I can wake up first thing in the morning and feel sorry for myself. You show me any person on the street, I can beat them at feeling sorry for myself. But anyway, I was editing our episode the other day when I was chewing the ice. Do you remember that? And you kept saying, hey, 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 hey. (laughs) And what sucks is I had been doing it for like three minutes before you finally said, hey, are you chewing ice? And you didn't notice it. But the microphone, (laughs) it noticed. Yep, it does. The microphone always knows. It's it's March. It's past mid-March for you guys. It's uh, July 1st probably for you guys. So, you know. You. Here's another bleep. Uh, sorry, I am really on one today. You really are Jersey rich. I don't think. I think Jersey is a lot more known for the liberal use of the F word than even Californians. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. You caught me in a weird mood here. But February, you vowed, and you vowed this before February that you were going to write every single day I it of like the February. Day before February, though. Are you sure? <laughs> Because I think, oh, you, you you told me I recorded an ankle cast and I said I'm going to write every single day in February, so I've got to do it. And the second you told me that, I thought, oh, well, I'm going to do that too, starting today. And uh, you made it, 500 words every single day in February. Yeah, miracles do happen. Not in my experience. <laughs> so then, where anybody else would be like, yay, afterglow, he passed me the cigarette, and would just stop. They would just be done. They would be like, hey, I, I set a goal. I achieved that goal. Now I'm going to get super, super fat. And you super didn't. wasted. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> that goes without saying. You said, N- you know, I did good in February. I'm going to up it to a thousand words a day in March. Because you don't like yourself much. You, you, <laughs> you're a masochist. Glutton for punishment. Yeah. I don't know. How, well, I do know why I did this. Because I still, in the back of my mind, and I had to look this up, I followed the trail back on my blog until I found the original time that I pledged to do 500 words a day for a month. And it was 2011. It's 2017 now. It was six years ago. I had no idea. Don't get old, folks, because that's what happens when you're old. Time just flies past it's like in those shots and anime shows where there's just those things flying past their heads you know those shots the lines yeah the lines so that they can you know just use that shot for any scene no matter where oh that's my life flying past like that it just zooms past so fast and yeah six years it's been since i did that the last time and if you'd asked me i would have said "Eh, three years ago no, I went like three years like without writing more than a 1,000 word story. So yeah, anyways. <laughs> Did I mention that I, I'm good at feeling sorry for myself? <laughs> really doing it right now. Yeah, freak out aside. Yeah, I saw that and I, I still fresh in my mind was what I did when I finished that. I did that for a whole month and I was like, oh yeah, I did it. It's so great. After glow and I got wasted and I'm just like, I'll take a couple days off. And then I'll get back to it, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. And I took a couple days off, which turned into like a week off, which turned into three weeks off, which turned into, I blew it completely. Did you have the chance to be a real writer? I did. I had the chance to be a real writer and I blew that guy over there. Oh, he's got a nice car. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> after that was over, I looked back on it and I thought, oh, you idiot. I don't know why I didn't jump back on it and just say, okay, yeah, you blew it. But, hey, December, let's do it again. Or November or whatever. I think it was September of 2011 that I did it the first time. I could have any time within the last six years done this again, but I never did. And I don't know really how I got motivated enough to do this. Uh, I recorded that ankle cast in... January in which everyone sent in their comments to me about my story that I had posted on the show. Bumps in the night. Go buy it. <laughs> Let me try to make it available for such. Yeah, so I, I posted the reactions to that story 
And something about everybody saying, oh yeah, and this and that, and all their comments kind of got me excited and made me think, you know what, I really want to do something. And so I decided, yeah, that that was what I was going to do. <sighs> I think there's been a few other times that I've probably tried something like that, and I just haven't stuck to it. So I don't know why I stuck with it this time. But by sticking through all of February, getting to the end, I knew I couldn't stop there. I knew I had to go forward and do it for another month and bigger. So yeah, I decided, okay, well, I'm just going to double it. I'll have to write a thousand words a day every day in March. And so far, I've managed a thousand words every day in March. It's more difficult. It takes, weirdly, it takes double the amount of time to write double the amount of words. That is weird. Yeah, it's, I don't understand it at all. I, I don't know how that works, but it does. I mean, that's the way it goes. Before we started recording, you were saying that you're not just writing a thousand words a day. You always go above and beyond so that you have words stockpiled, if you will. <laughs> you know, and it's just like if something happened and you got real sick or if you met a girl or something, you could take a day off and you'd still be ahead. But not that you're planning to. That is true, yeah. I don't know, maybe there's somebody who you could say, hey, write a thousand words, and they would type them up and then go, there you go, that's exactly 1,000. <laughs> but most people, you can't do that. You're just going to write until you're like, okay, uh, I wonder if I've made it yet, and then you check, and you're like, oh, wow, I'm at 1150, good, okay. Sure. I guess I can call it a night. And so, you know, I mean, every even the days where, oh, man, some of the days where I'm just like, it's only at 926, I gotta write a little further, and then, you know, usually by the time I'm done, I'm like, oh, well, now I'm at 1,053. So even on those days where, you know, like one day, oh my gosh, I had the worst headache, and I just did not want to write, and it was going so slowly and taking so long. And, yeah, I got close to the end, and, yeah, that one, I think, is my lowest count for the month. And, yeah, it's like 1050 or 1051 or something like that, so... Even on that day, I still went 50 over because, you know, you can't just, you know, you're just going to throw the dart and hit it right in the center of the bullseye every time. It's impossible. So, yeah, there's lots of days where, you know, I usually get like 100 or, or two extra words. And, yeah, you add those up. Uh, you know, if you get 100 extra words a day, you know, by now that's 1,300 extra words. But I know that I've gotten a lot more than that extra on some days, so I think I've got at least two days extra worth of words if I was to be like, oh, you know what, today i got to take a day off. Well, it, but it is, this is going to sound pretty crappy, so just be warned, so out of character for you to, <laughs> to hear this kind of stuff. It, it's just, it's remarkable, because in the time I've known you, you do get really excited about something, but it doesn't last. And for this to have gone 40-something days, it's ha it's totally lasted. And you, there you show no signs of stopping. The, the, the day, the prover, the example, the exemplar was the day that you had the splitting headache and you still forced yourself to do it. Because I was just like, yeah, there were two or three nights ago where I didn't want to write and I realized I had written nothing. And I was like, uh, well... I don't know that I care. And that was it. I still did it like an hour later because I thought, well, you know, if I spent 15 minutes, I'd be good. But I didn't have a headache. I was just lazy. And you still did it when it was super, super hard. We've been talking about this for a decade or even longer, maybe, from when we first heard this horse shit about if you do something 28 days in a row, it becomes a habit. It's something that I don't believe in and you don't believe in. <laughs> it becomes a habit, but if you don't do it one day in a row, it stops being a habit. <laughs> yeah, and see, that just flies in the face of the definition of habit. <laughs> but it it's remarkable that you've been doing it, and I've been doing it as well. I've not skipped a single day. I've been writing, and I wrote more than you did in February. But in March, you've way, way eclipsed me. And there have been a few days this month where I've sat down and I'll be like, okay, I'll do a, a thousand words. And it's hard, man. You said it's twice as hard as doing <laughs> 500. It's way more than twice. 
because you there's like a, a natural rhythm or whatever, and 300 words I can do in no time at all. Uh, and then once we pass 300, then it starts to be more of an uphill battle. And yeah, about five, 600 is, is the, okay, that's good. I feel like I've accomplished something. I need to stop. And then you have that last stretch when I just don't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. I have to force the muse or whatever. And I know there are people that write for hours and hours every single day. But the point I'm trying to make is it's been remarkable just in the, the 45 days, 50 days that I've been doing this every single day, how much progress I've made story-wise. You know, I finished a novella, a complete novella. I wrote a short story. I started another novella. And by the end of March, it will be done as well. And in the past, a novella was a four, five, eight, nine month process. It took that long to write it. And there are several out there where I didn't last the four, five, six, eight months. I just gave up despite all this work and all these words that I had under my belt. Forcing myself to write every single day, it's unbelievable how fast I get to the end and then can just start on the next project because I don't take a day off or week off or whatever and not write for a while. I'm supposed to write the next day. I can see how somebody could just do this every single day of the year uh, and be a writer. And they've constantly got new product coming out. We were talking about that lady at our writer conference who publishes a novel every other month. It floored me. They're just like, how? How is that even fudging possible? It's like Kirk Cameron having two dates to the prom or making that terrible Christmas movie. (laughs) I believe it now, just a month later, because yeah. I could write a novel in two months if, I mean, yeah, if I really worked hard on it. I... When you stop and do the math, which uh, is goofy, and I, I can't remember if I've gone through this entire process on the podcast before or just while I was talking with you, but I don't think it was on the podcast. It bears saying again. I'm going to say it again anyway. So I went to a panel at this conference, and yeah, the woman was saying... You know, you have to publish something every other month, uh, at least every three months. You know, you, you, you in this day of self-publishing and, and all that kind of stuff, you got to stay in these people's minds because you don't have, like, ads and stuff like that that are going to be out there. Your book's probably not going to be on a shelf that they're going to see. And people don't look at shelves. They don't go to bookstores anymore. So if they're not thinking and remembering you, constantly then they're going to forget about you and stop buying your stuff and never come back so you got to do that and i'm just like gosh every two months you're kidding me but then i was writing and i decided to do a thousand words a day and i and i sat down and i thought about that and i said that'll be cool because by the end of march i'll have 31 thousand words that i wrote in march and then i thought you know the woman in that panel said that she writes novels that are YA novels and they're generally around 40 to 50,000 words. 40 to 50,000 words. I could write that myself as not a full-time writer and still have 10 to 20 days at the end of two months to plan out the next novel before I even start writing that and to do the other things that you got to do, I guess, you know, like proofreading and, and recording the audio version and uh, making the cover, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And to, to write a thousand words takes about an hour, more or less. So an, at an hour a day, I could write at a professional's pace. See, that's astounding. It is astounding. Well, you and, and I are constantly, or I'm always bringing up Brandon Sanderson. Uh-huh. That I, I wish I'd never read that interview with Brandon Sanderson because it just made me feel so small. And you've seen me <laughs> naked, dude. Don't remind me. <laughs> I was just like, oh gosh, how could anybody do what this guy does? And now granted, that's still the truth. Because he writes these gargantuan tomes with about 300 extra pages that are unnecessary in every single book. <laughs> that sounded like a criticism. Yet he's always putting them out. But yeah, just if I did the thousand words that you're doing in the month of March, um, I would practically have a novel at the end of this month. And that's just doing... I mean, for me, it doesn't even take an hour to get a thousand words. 
Although today you kicked my butt. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> I, I didn't even, I told you, but I didn't tell you the full extent. I cheated. I wrote at the library and I was just like, oh, well, I guess I'll clear the... No, I won't clear this. I'll leave it up. <laughs> and I just continued from there. Plus, your damned keyboard wasn't working. So I was like, yeah. ah, the day is mine. <laughs> yeah, I had to have had three or four hundred words, I think, by the time you started typing. And you passed me by. I, I don't know how you did it, but you did. And yeah, both of us reached a thousand before the timer got to the end. And so you said, should we keep typing or are we good? And I said, we've been done for a long time. I, I just keep writing all work and no play. Make. <laughs> but anyhow, now I don't see Brandon Sanderson's productivity as so impossible anymore. You know, if you have a job and you have a family and you have responsibilities, but you can still write a novel every other month, then it's doable. It's totally, even what Sanderson does is doable. Yeah, it, it's funny because that's one of the things that always, you know, seemed to be the impossibility to me is I would look and think, OK, well, eventually to be a professional writer, you know, you do it as your job. You stop doing the other things and you do just that. You can't just quit your job and do that and expect to immediately have money to pay your bills with and stuff. You know, you've got to do it in your spare time for a long time and build up enough following and enough publications and so forth so that, hey, I'm going to be making, you know, five bucks off of this thing each month and five bucks off of this thing and you add them all up and I'll be making, I don't know, a thousand bucks a month or whatever. You can't quit and then try and take it to the next level until you get there. And I just thought, oh, there's no way I will ever get there. you got to do it full time to ever be full time. But yeah, it wasn't until this that I realized that, that you don't have to do it full time. Just an hour a day is all it would take to really get you over that hump. And the other thing I thought was funny was when I tried to figure out, I was like, okay, geez, if I make 30,000 words in a month, how many words does that make in a year? Uh-oh. And stupidly, I did it the wrong way <laughs> by saying, okay, what's 12 <laughs> times 30,000? I was like, three, there's, there's 36, 36, three, 360,000, right? Right? Am I, is that, I don't know why, but, and then I thought, oh, dumbass, there's 365 days in a year, just 365 plus thousand is what you would do. <laughs> so, uh, you could do 365,000 words in a year, writing 1,000 words a day. Now, Brandon Sanderson's <laughs> gigantic tomes... I don't know what they run, but I would say 200,000. So you could write one and a half, almost two of those a year, just at 1,000 words a day. That's amazing. But again, doable. Exactly. And that's what I've learned by way of doing this. And one of the things that I'm considering, and I don't know if I will or not yet, is what I should do in April... I will where knee do you I, in the groin if you say 1,500 Where words. do I go with this? And I was thinking, do I want to try 1,500? Is that worth going for? That makes it probably an hour and a half a day that I'll have to spend on this. And I'll probably have to be a little more wise with my time if I'm going to do that. Do I want to do that or do I want to keep at what I'm at and add something else? I, ha I haven't decided exactly what I want to do with April. There's a lot of things that I need to do, I think, to be a writer. Um, we've talked about some of them just in our chats, and we've talked about some of them on the show. You know, getting a Patreon together, getting a website together, learning uh, how to publish all this stuff, learning about publishing, you know, as paper books, paperback books and hardback books, and how you can make those available for people and what the best way to do it is, et cetera, et cetera. How to deal with the business end of things. A lot of that stuff I don't know. And I think I need to know so that I can get to that as well. Because I'm willing to bet that those people that work full-time as writers probably spend half their time not writing. It's all the other end of the business, you know, putting together their covers however it is that they put them together 
and uh, you know getting an artist or doing it themselves a lot of people are artists as well and like to do their own covers etc etc all those things you know talking with editors and getting people to proofread their stuff and so on and so forth <laughs> and that stuff that I suppose I, I will need to eventually and you know maybe I could do it something like you know I write this many words a day six days a week and on the seventh day not rest but do uh, you know the one other thing that I need to learn or something like that during my time I'm not, I'm not sure what exactly how exactly I'll go about it but I'm going to up the ante come April in some way Maybe it's human nature, or maybe it's maleness. But I hear you say that, and I'm like, well, I'm going to do that too. Man. I'm not going <laughs> to let him win. So when you upped the ante, when you said, you know, I'm going to do it another month, A, I said, okay, well, I'll do it another month too. But two, I, I said, okay, well, my goal for March is I'm going to publish. I'm going to, because yes, writing is really good, but what Rich Outfield does is he writes. And then he doesn't share it with anybody. True enough. And so I, I made a goal of publishing five things in March. Just between you and me, I've already got two published. Can I tell somebody about that, like, later or something? Well, if you Has want. to stay between you and me? No, you can. I mean, it's going to be in the podcast, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, and, and I've told you before that one of the things that Abby does is that she writes a short story every single month for her Patreon people. Followers. I still haven't figured out what the word is. Somebody that supports you. Patrons. Okay. <laughs> Patreon patrons. Yeah. Sounds like a Marvel Comics character. Patreon P patrons. But so I, as one of my goals for my Patreon, uh, not goals, but um, reward tiers, if that's what you call it. I said, you know, if anybody bids this, if anybody. Uh, Clearly, I am very Pledges? experienced. We'll say pledge. Yes. If anybody pledges this, then I will write, I will send you a story every single month, figuring that nobody would. But if somebody did, I'd be like, okay, well, this is the least I can do to pay them back. And, and so, yeah, that's something that I got to do every single month, too. But, but it's good. It's good to keep putting stuff out there, like you said, with the lady that said, you know, every. Every right. other month, she said? She yeah, said because... at least every other month. Every other month was like the outside edge. you got to do it more often than that. And I can understand that. I mean, my wife reads voraciously. And she reads a lot of the same authors. She goes, what, the way she gets her books is goes to the thrift store and goes through the bookshelves there and just any book that's by some of the authors that she likes, she'll buy it if she hasn't read it. Every now and then, she'll be like, oh, I can't find anybody in the authors that I know, so I'll try a different one that's in the genre that she likes. And so she gets a few new ones, and if she likes that person, then she'll add them to her list of people that she'll read. Yeah, but she'll read, you know, the, the same author five, six, seven books in a month by the same author if she can, wow. if she has ones that she hasn't read before. You know. Well, yeah, and it would be great to hear that there's somebody that liked my stuff enough they're, they're just like yeah it. whatever you've got <laughs> anytime you put something out there just know that i will buy it my sister recently got a kindle and she said oh hey how can i read your books on my kindle and i told her to go to smash words and there were some free things because i didn't want her to pay for it because i'm a moron <laughs> although it's my sister i didn't want her to pay for it i, I can just give her my stories if she really really wants them right. but anyway she went on to smash words and like downloaded everything by me i was surprised because she's the one that she liked was greetings from the ninth sector and i was just like but that's sci-fi why why and she's like oh, i just liked it and i said well uh were, were there any that you didn't like and she didn't like a uh, slight delay so, oh that's the which bunny is, suit one is I gotta say, probably my favorite story <laughs> on Smashwords, at least. I just and, and and I understand it's not for everybody. She's just like hey, the story just ended. What the hell was that supposed to be? But that's why I like it so much. It's just a bizarre, stupid, bunny suit story. But anyhow, I guess I was hoping that the somebody out there who's not my sister <laughs> is that same way. They just can't wait. They're 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 hoping that I put more stuff out. Makes me think of that Ben Fold song. I am good enough. 
Better than them, I kick their asses. They like my stuff. All my family tells me I'm great. <laughs> really? All my family tells me I'm great. Oh, that's funny. But anyhow, sorry, that's what I've been trying to work on in March. But doing the writing every day, too. And you, you can always do something better than you have been doing. And I, I, I definitely have fallen short with that. But uh, baby steps. I, I, you know, writing every day is an accomplishment. And publishing five things in a month is an accomplishment. And next month, there'll be different goals. So. Yeah, that's uh, one of the things I'm considering. It's just what it's going to be next time. But again, you know, just like I did at the uh, turn of this month, is I, I don't want to lose the momentum. I want to keep it going. I don't want to stand pat and just, oh yeah, I want to do a thousand words next month too every day. That's, that's probably fine. Because that's the same and I've already done that. Can I do more? What can I do? Where can I take this? And, um, you know, I do have to evaluate what... Uh, such effort is doing to the rest of my life? Am I ruining my life? Am I, you know, ignoring my entire family and my children think I'm a, a stranger or something like that? I'm trying to avoid that, and I, I think I'm managing. Sometimes it means staying up really late, which is not always good because I also have to get up pretty early in the morning. I'm trying to f figure out a way to deal with that too. I'm much more of an of a night owl. As opposed to a morning person, though. I can stay up pretty late without too much effort, but getting up early to do things is a real struggle. So I don't know that I'll turn things around and do it the other way. But I feel like I'm finally getting there. I feel like I'm achieving what I've been dreaming about for a long time, and I'm making it a habit. It's becoming a thing that I'm going to do, that I'm not going to stop doing. I'm just going to do it. Uh, you know, the thing that I've quoted probably on the show at least ten times, if not more, is, you know, in Stephen King's book, On Writing, he says a writer is someone who writes every day. I guess for now I can say I'm a writer because I do that every day. I would say within a few months I'll have my first novel written. It looks like this one's probably going to be long. Which is unfortunate. I think it would have been smart to write a short one my first time around. But the story's the story, and it's got to be told the way the story's got to be told. And I do worry, I think we talked a little bit about this, that, you know, nobody's going to like it. That it's Because it's not one of those traditional three-act structure kind of stories. I don't know, it's, it's very different from that. It doesn't follow, you know, that, that the arc the structure that everybody expects. And I'm, I don't know, I'm afraid that people will just be bored by it. And they'll be like, well, that's the last Big Inkovich novel I'm ever going to read. And also I worry because, as usual, my stories have downer kind of endings, and that's what I had planned for this story. Now I'm sort of crafting something different in my head to keep the downer ending from being the ending ending. Well, would tell the audience what your daughter said when you told her how it was going to end. Yeah, I, t I was worried about this, especially after putting out the 10th album. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, this story is great! This is the best Big Anklevich story ever! And I'm just like, oh, they only like it because it has a, f a positive ending for once. Instead of a stupid downer ending like I always put in everything. And I, I was telling my family the basic premise of the novel and saying, you yeah, know, this is what happens, and this happens, and this happens, and then here's the ending. And I'm just like, and yeah, it's just, I don't want to do it because people don't respond to that kind of stuff. They don't like it. And my daughter was just like, no, Dad, you got to do it just like that. <laughs> you have to write it exactly. That's great. I love that ending. You need to keep it. Uh, okay, but you haven't read any of my other stuff, so you don't realize how dour and sad and nihilistic and depressive that I am. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things that is there in the back of my mind as I write this novel every day. It's just like, am I wasting my time? <laughs> and I know that I'm not wasting my time because even if nobody ever sees it, 
it's done. It's one that I wrote, and I can say, yeah, I wrote a novel. Uh -huh, and I'm writing another one. What do you think of that? Is Hollywood that... B.D. Anklevich oh. here saying, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> I'm better than them. I kick their asses. I can all do my this. family says I'm Yeah, great. all my family says my stuff is great. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that my family doesn't say that. I hide my stuff from my family. Isn't that sad? I don't mm. know if it's sad, but I certainly can relate. A, a magazine came the other day. I st sold a story to a magazine, and they they printed it, and they sent me two copies, and uh, I handed it to my niece, who is 16, and I was like, look, check it out. And she looked at it, and she's like, oh, neat. And I don't know if she knew that I was pointing at my own name on the magazine, or she was just like, oh, thanks for letting me look at the magazine. And then she set it down, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess... No one will ever read this, but <laughs> it's something that you and I have in common. If if I if I give that magazine to my mom, she's like, "I'm very disappointed in you, son." Like I'm eight years old. <laughs> all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. I just recently listened to your podcast where you spoke of Mrs. What was it, Bigley? Mrs. Bigler, the, the, the typing that, teacher, the one that saw your story that had an F word in it or something like that, and turned you into the principal. I had to meet with the fudge and vice principal of my parents <laughs> for putting the F word in a story that you were typing. I don't think that would have happened where I went to school, but I did. I was. I'm from California. Yes. Yeah, you had a middle school. <laughs> That's weird that you remembered that. That just kind of blew my mind as I heard that. I was like, what? I don't was know. Was it in first grade? I'm not what? sure what episode that was that I, I referred to her. But there's no way I didn't call her a bitch. <laughs> of all my teachers, that's still the one where I was just like, wow, she sucked. But I can type faster than anyone I know. So. Good. It's one of those things. Sometimes I wish I could just go back in time and say, okay, I'm going to have a typing contest with you, Miss Bigler, in front of all of these students. And if I win, then you will shut the hell up. But if you win, then okay, give me an F. Give me a U is what she actually gave me. A U was unacceptable in the class, which is worse than the F because you were suspended or some shit like that. <laughs> I think I may have released a monster. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, sometimes I just dream about that. And it's like, there's no way even a, a keyboarding teacher could beat me in typing now. It's just, there's no way. Speaking of keyboarding, I, I was watching a, a football documentary the other day, and I found out that uh, Troy Aikman was a uh, statewide champion at typing. Well, that came in <laughs> handy with the... Uh, I mean, it prevented him from so many fumbles. That's right. That's right. He was really able to get that hand snug right up in that guy's butt crack. Plus, Troy Aikman was that a finalist on American Idol. Everybody liked the most. A little bit effeminate, but we, we liked yeah. him. And he had a guest starring role on Phineas and Ferb. <laughs> um. <laughs> I hate it. I, I sort of made a football joke, but it was more a reality singing joke. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, as far as things go in this whole process, it, it's going well. I, I see everything on the up and up. Right now I have the rose-colored glasses on. The, um, salmon. It's salmon. Oh, <laughs> it's clearly salmon. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see th everything looking positive in the future. And, you know... I do fear a little bit because I've gotten really into a lot of things over the years. I've been really into selling figures on eBay and I don't do that anymore. I've given it up and put it behind me completely and I used to be really into soccer and I was one of those guys that painted their faces and made flags and took them to the every... I was at every game and I had a drum that I played and I chanted and... He, he was so into it that for an entire season they used his image in all their <laughs> advertising. Which sounds like a lie, but it is not a lie. <laughs> they used it with absolutely no compensation too big. That's true. His face was on every... But they were on the, the ticket stubs, it was on website ads, it was on the program. 
program. That was the word I was looking for. And yeah, it, it was a little crazy. And, and I don't do that anymore. I, I I go. I'm lucky if I'm lucky. I go to a game a year. And there's lots of other things on top of that. You know, I could, I could keep listing them off. I'm not going to bore you guys with. He, all for a while the... there, he was so into toe licking. You would not <laughs> believe it. It's like strangers. He'd be like, "Hey, yeah. this is going to sound a little strange." But before you say no. I would go on the forums about it and learn like new techniques. He did. He yeah. And and, and now, what? You probably don't do that even once a month. Maybe twice. Maybe, okay. Maybe six times. Oh. Okay. Well, maybe you never <laughs> quite leave that behind. It's so one of those things you do that twenty eight times in a row. And, uh... Yeah, twenty eight days in a row, things become a habit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I used to do a lot of those things, and I don't do them anymore, and so I do worry about that. You know, right now I'm super positive, and I feel like it's time that I'm finally going to fulfill my life's dream, my life's goal, and I'm going to do this thing, and I'm going to make it my life. But I do fear that there'll come a time when I'm like, no, oh, man, I think I'm done with that. The desire to tell stories has been with me forever, but... I might follow. It, it, another thing, I was super into running. I would run all the time. I ran, you know, I made a goal to run 500 miles in the space of a year, and I did it. And I haven't run in a year, probably. <sighs> I, I hate it. it. I feel like I blew it so badly. And I don't want to do the same thing with this. I do fear that there's that possibility that I'll let it slide and then, you know, be like, oh man, it's been a year since the last time I wrote. That sucks. But the difference, and maybe there is no difference, but the difference between your soccer excitement and your running is that even if five years from now you no longer write, you have a novel that you wrote that hopefully is out there and somebody can discover even though it's five years since you've written anything. I mean, maybe somebody would stumble across a picture of you with your face painted on, <laughs> a, a, you know, the, the MLS website or whatever. Or maybe somebody would see a video that you made. Because you made some killer videos of you running that were all inspirational. And But you have a physical artifact from your writing time if you, when you finish this book. Yeah, that's true. That is something that won't go away. And I'm sure everything that I publish, I will make sure to order myself a few copies of. And I'll sign them. Too big. Keep on keeping on. Oh, see, I thought Signed you were looking at the B. picture on the back of your uh, of your book. And you're like, ooh, too big. <laughs> well, there's probably that, too. Well, I feel like we've reached the end of this episode. It's just going to get into more cursing. And nobody wants that. God damn it. <clears throat> <laughs> That's right. And that fan sweeper truck has shown oh, up. Oh, yes. So My enemy. I think it only comes on Mondays. I think that's what the deal is. No, that's you. Uh, yeah, so thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we'll be back again probably next month and tell you how things are going. And uh, we'll tell you about what's available to purchase. What's available to purchase right now, Rochelle Field? What's your most recent publication? You said you published, what, two things already so far? I did. I published New Year's Day. in Ooh, New Year's Day. That's a long one, in right? In text and audio. And then I published Varkulak in text and audio. That one I remember being long, too. But maybe it's there, because I novels. read it yeah. at, like, 1 a.m. <laughs> I remember that one specifically because I think, like, I said, the end. And you're like, all right, well, I guess I'll see you later. And you left immediately. The, the like, sun was coming up. Yeah. Mm. It was so late when I read that story. But yeah, that one I remember being pretty long. So they're both novellas? I, I don't know. I don't know what a novella is. How many? Okay. I what's don't a, know. What's a general word count? I don't know. I know that uh, New Year's Day was really long because I once printed it out. Yes, you did. And, and I, I still have some of those pages because yeah. it was... A uh, giant stack. Yes, it was a lot. It was. I did print it in large type so that we could read it without any strain whatsoever. I used to always do that. I'd print it at like 16-point font or something like that when I'd print it out. But whew, 
Ooh, that one was long. I must have gone through hundreds of pieces of paper that weren't mine to print that out so that we could read it, which we never did. I read it to myself. And uh, yeah, it was good. You, you should definitely check that one out. Uh, New Year's Day is a good one. And how do you say that other one? <laughs> I don't know. You I, I say it. it's Varkolak, but okay, Varkolak. in the in the audio book I pronounced it Varkolak, and so I don't know. Okay, Varkolak. <laughs> Go and pick that one up too. That one's a good long one, and it involves werewolves, whereas New Year's Day involves a creepy old house. So. And so next time, I guess, we'll, I'll be asking you the same question. What can they go out and buy? The guy's just parked right next to us. It's like he yeah. knows we're podcasting. Yeah, he got out with like a leaf blower, and he's over here blowing it right next to our cars. Thanks, dude. I guess that's what we get for being the only cars in the parking lot. <sighs> All right, but yeah, go check those out, and uh, we'll be back again with another That Gets My Goat coming up soon. Thanks for uh, listening, folks. I've been Hollywood Big Anklevich, baby. And I've been California Rich Outfield. Buy it! Yeah! It'll change your life. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rich Outfield? No, not that lame. Stay... Bark, bark, quack, tail. Good boy. Good boy. Really big? Seriously?